Hey, what's up guys and welcome to the video. Now today's vehicle is a 2002 Pontiac Grand Am that the owner has been using for work for over a decade and it's got some pretty nasty stains inside. So let's have a look around. Okay, starting with the exterior and unfortunately it's in pretty rough shape and is rusting in quite a few places, but what isn't rusted out is just dull and grungy looking and definitely needs some work, especially the tires. But moving inside now, and besides the overwhelming smell in here, I haven't seen carpets this dirty for quite a while. There's all kinds of brown and orange stains all over, especially in the back. And of course, the seats are pretty dirty and stained too, and the center console is covered in cigarette ash. But just before we dive into this mess, take a second and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I post a new video like this every week, and if you've got the bell on, you'll get notified the moment they go live. All right, well, there's no doubt it's going to be a bit of a challenge to get all those stains out, and I'm definitely going to need my respirator today as the whole vehicle just reeks of cigarette smoke. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, well, just before I get started, I'm going ahead and running the ozone machine to try and knock down some of the smoke smell, and I'll run it again when I'm done the detail, but starting on pressure washing now, and like you saw in the opening, there's a number of spots on the car where the body panels are rusting, so I'm going to need to be extra careful around those today so I don't make them any worse. working my way around the car now and for anyone who might be wondering about my pressure washer that I'm using here, well it's an electric Bertolini pressure washer that pushes 2 gallons per minute at 1900 psi and if you want any further info on it the link is right at the top of the description and for anyone wondering about my pressure washer wand, well I got that at Princess Auto here in Canada. Starting on these dirty wheels now and I'll first get some of my Detail Geek wheel and tire cleaner sprayed on which is easily able to cut through all the dirt and blooming on these tires as well as take care of any dirt or brake dust on the rims. So if you're looking for a powerful all-in-one wheel cleaner, well look no further. You can find this on my website at detailgeekautocare.com and it's also dilutable up to 2 to 1 so if your wheels are only lightly dirty you can dilute it down a bit and make your bottle last 3 times as long.
Now starting on the wash stage, and I figured I'd mention that I always use the two bucket method when washing a vehicle, which means having one bucket with soapy water and one bucket for rinsing my wash mitt, and I also have grit guards in the bottom of each bucket. If you aren't sure what those are, I've got links to them in the description for you. But basically, you want to use a nice, soft microfiber chenille wash mitt and go panel by panel, rinsing your mitt after each one. Of course, washing the vehicle top down, and if you follow those steps, you will greatly reduce the chance of instilling any swirl marks in the paint. And if you're thinking, but why bother when the vehicle is already beat up and rusty like this one is? Well, quite simply, it's because I treat every vehicle I detail as if it was my own, and since I aim to deliver perfection with my details, I couldn't possibly do that if I didn't approach it with that mentality. Okay, with the floor mats clean, I'll quickly get the seats removed after disconnecting the battery so I don't have any issues with the vehicle throwing a code, and I'll also get the back seat removed as well, and then looking at what's underneath them all, and it's safe to say the extracting is going to be good later on. Working my way around with the vacuum, and you can probably already tell that there hasn't been much for debris in the vehicle, which is a really nice change of pace. Plus, with the vehicle being older, it's got better quality carpet, which also makes the vacuuming process much easier as well.
Okay, well starting on extracting now, and as usual, I'm starting with the seats since I know they'll need the most amount of time to dry out afterwards. And given how visually dirty they are, I'm opting for my medium green drill brush today as I just have a feeling I'm going to need a bit more agitating ability around the entire vehicle to get these stains lifted. Now given the color of the seats, it was a little hard to tell if they were perfectly clean yet, so I'm going ahead and repeating the entire process, and I'll carefully watch the color of the water coming through the Bissell, and once I see it coming through clear, that's when I know the seats are clean and I can move on to the next section. Starting on the back seat now, and I figured it was a good time for this week's members question, which comes from Joel, and it's what is your best memory of your first car? I think you said it was an Acura Integra, tell us a story about it. Now the Integra I mentioned in an earlier video was actually my second car. My first car was a little three cylinder 1991 Pontiac Firefly, which I had for about a year, and one of the best memories I have of it was delivering pizzas in it for Domino's when I was 16. Not only did I make money on the gas mileage they paid me for because it was so fuel efficient, there were a couple of big orders I took where the car was absolutely stuffed full of pizzas, so it was quite the sight to see. It's time to tackle the worst stains in here, so after spraying on some of my Chemical Guys Lightning Fast Carpet Solution Diluted 20 to 1, 
I'll hit it with the drill brush, making sure to agitate well, especially around the edges where the majority of the stains are. And as I make the first few passes with the extractor, it's clear that whatever the stain is, is pretty firmly stuck in there. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I aim to deliver perfection with my details, so I'm certainly not going to give up here without a fight. I'll go ahead and repeat the process again, but even after agitating, I can tell I'm reaching the limit on how much of this I can remove, as the solution barely changed color, and what's coming through the extractor is pretty light, so while I always try to leave a vehicle looking perfect, there are occasions where I have to accept that perfection just isn't possible, Although I always give a stain everything I have, and that includes using a different stain remover like Folex and hitting it with the steamer later on like I did here. starting on the other rear footwell here, and I wanted to mention that the recent Find Mike contest I ran is officially over. I announced the winner on the community post from a few weeks back, as well as gave gift cards to a couple of runner-ups as well, but I did want to extend a thank you to everyone who took the time to send in a list. It was greatly appreciated, and if you happen to be a fan of Mike, well, you can now sit back, relax, and enjoy an entire playlist of all the videos he's got cameos in. He says it's the best playlist on YouTube. Here's the two entire buckets full of all the nasty stains pulled from the Grand Am. I haven't seen a water pour this filthy for a while. Gross. Moving to the console, and after spraying on some Detail Geek APC diluted 10 to 1, I'll blast everything with the steamer, which is going to make quick work of all the grime, especially down in the crevices where it can be hard to reach. The steam basically just blasts everything out, so if any of you are in the market for one of the best tools a detailer can have, well I've got the link to it down in the description, so feel free to give it a look. Not only can it be used for your vehicle, it also comes with a mop attachment for steam cleaning floors in your house, so it's incredibly versatile.
Now for all the trim pieces I removed earlier, the process here is simple. Spray on some all-purpose cleaner, blast it with the steamer and brush attachment, and then just rinse them off afterwards. Though it's important to note that you always want to move the steamer quickly and never hold it in one spot for too long, as it can easily discolor plastics if you don't. Now to breathe some life back into this faded and dull paint, I'm using my Detail Geek Synthetic Paint Sealant, which will boost the depth and gloss and leave it protected for about 6 months, but what I love most about the sealant is how easy it is to wipe off once it's hazed over. Last step here is to dress the tires, and for that I'm using CarPro Pearl diluted about 2 to 1. All right guys, well, 10 hours later and the Grand Am is looking, I'd say about as good as it possibly can. And it sure is nice to get that respirator off because, oh man, that car was smelly. Now, if you guys enjoyed this one, please make sure you smash the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Enjoy the guitar outro and I will see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.